I think we're okay now. Um, please, if you can see me indicate. I was trying to resolve the technical issues, but I think it's fine now. And in a couple of minutes, we'll just get started. Tonight, I'll be talking about 10 things I look for when I interview, sharing from my personal experience. So please, if you're here, um, just indicate, and in the next few minutes, we'll start. I apologize for the technical issues, but um, we're just going to start right away. So if you're here, please indicate. So if you can hear me now, please, um, I'd like you to just show that you can hear me and you can see the slides. Please indicate if you can hear me. Good evening, everyone. If you can see the slides also, I'd like you to please indicate. If you can hear me, please indicate. If you're here right now, can you please indicate? Oh, thank you, Brian Madetola. Okay, you can see the slide. Thank you. Vincent, you said not yet. Oh, I do hope you can. I do hope you can. Hola, Duni Babalola, welcome. I'm sorry about the technical issues we, we had at the beginning, but I think um, we've um, gotten it sorted now. Okay, we said you can hear me. Joshua Susona Goshen, you can hear me loud and clear. Thank you so much. Um, we'll get started in a couple of minutes. I want a few more people to join us, especially those who were on the former broadcast. I'm sure they'll be trying to um, get on this now. So tonight I'm going to be talking about 10 things I look for when I interview. I'll be sharing from my personal experience and I do hope um, a few people will be able to pick one or two things tonight. So let's just um, give a few more people um, time to, to get on the broadcast tonight. I want to appreciate everybody who has joined me tonight. Thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for joining. Thank you for your love. 
So if you are on, please let me know. Other people were on now. Okay, Reverend, you said the audio is not clear. Reverend Raphael, let me know if you can hear me now. Is the audio better now? Olumide, Rola, thank you for joining. Pastor Kishola, thank you for joining us. I'm going to start in the next two minutes, but I want to be sure that everybody can see the slides and you can hear me. Can you see the slides? And can you hear me clearly? Please indicate. So bye bye to Collins Bano, thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for joining us. So I'll just start right away. I'll just start right away tonight. Uh, thank you so much for joining. I apologize for starting a bit uh, late. I had technical issues and I think we have resolved it. Please, if you can hear me, I'll still appreciate if you can indicate. Okay, so that I'll be sure that we are together. Okay. Okay, thank you. Chidi Ebere Umahi. Okay, thank you. You can see me. All right. And you can hear me and you can see the slides. Fantastic. Okay, Collins Bano, you can see the slides. Fantastic. Henry Olayene, thank you for coming tonight. Um, thank you so much. So we'll just get right to it. Now, tonight I want to talk about 10 things I look for when I interview. Now, I'll be sharing from my personal experience um, from interviewing hundreds and hundreds of candidates um, over a 20 year span um, across my career over the, i've had the opportunity of seeing across you know panels total interviewing candidates and i want to share from my wealth of experience tonight uh, certain tips that who, who are either trying to move up their career ladder or who are trying to get a job 
at whatever level you are in your professional career, I'm very sure that there is something you'll be able to take away from my session tonight. There'll be something you, Bumi, you are here. Bumi Teru, wow. That's our HR specialist. I'm happy you are here. Maybe you help us take a few questions tonight. Abalu Uthman, Babatunde, thank you. Adeto Yolua Sheung, so glad you guys are here. Karamola Dexter, Steven, thank you so much. Taiwan, no, thank you, thank you. Sunday Akonde, thank you. So I want to share from my experience tonight, very practical things, you know, because this pandemic will be over. COVID-19 will be over. I'm sure we'll get back to our lives. I'm sure that there will still be job interviews. People will have to go and um, get something, you know, done and all that. So let's just use this opportunity to refresh ourselves, get some new perspectives, share some experience, share some ideas, some insights that can help us um, when you want to appear for a session. All right. If you're going to be a career professional, most likely at least once your career lifetime, you will have to sit across a panel. Okay. A lot of us have done that so many times. Um, so it's something that at night I believe a lot of people will be able to get one, two, or two things from. Okay. Uh, so we'll just. I want to start by talking about um, different types of interviews that we have. Now, what I'll be talking about tonight, I'll be talking about types of interviews. I'll be talking about what you need to do to interview before the interview. Uh, and then I'll be talking about 10 critical areas, 10 critical areas you need to focus on. We'll be looking at the content of a good CV. We'll be looking at the CV facts, OK? And then we'll be looking at the three major skills that, you know, a lot of interviewers are actually looking for, you know, but I'll be zeroing in on someone like me, what I'll be looking for specifically. That was why I personalized the title of this particular presentation. We'll be looking at employability skills, transferable skills, technical skills. And then, of course, we'll be looking at five red flags that you need to avoid in an interview. Those are things that you must never do in an interview and then I'm going to close this with some sample interview questions. So let's just get right to it. Okay. I want to thank you again for coming tonight. So let's just get right to it. Okay. Um, Joe Ashalu, don't worry. Forget the guy that is asking for money. Just, just leave him. Or God, in cap, please assist me financially. And then you put your account number. I don't do giveaways there. I don't give away money. I give away knowledge and information. Okay. Thank you. I know they do give away. This give away so joe just ignore him all right so let's start with the types of interviews you will discover that a lot of organizations the very first thing they will do is to call you for an aptitude test which is usually computer based um sometimes they combine it with what they call psychometric tests okay before progressing to the interview stage so a lot of times you will have to take an aptitude test for a lot of organizations right now where you will sit in front of the computer, they'll give you a few questions, they call it aptitude test, and then some combine it with the call psychometric tests. Okay, now what are psychometric tests? Um, psychometric tests actually test the candidate's mental capabilities and also maybe your personality and behavioral style. So a lot of organizations combine this, and um, I want to encourage you, if you go online, you see a lot of these aptitude tests online, um, some of them are GMAT based. You can still get some of those GMAT um, test based questions online. Some of them, you can get all these GMAT handouts. You can go through them. Um, they are available online and then you can take a lot of practice questions. All right. But let's get into the types of interview. Let's assume you have passed the aptitude test, you have gone beyond the psychometric test, and then they call you for the interview. There are four, four interviews, okay, four basic type of, type of interviews. Um, there's the telephone where they can call you on the phone and then you have a chat on the phone. It's not face to face, it's on the phone. Okay, they just ask you a few questions, they ask you to introduce yourself, they just want to hear your voice and see whether you can progress to the next stage. Okay, so organizations can choose to start with the telephone interview. So they want to just do telephone. With that, they are able to screen a few candidates. Okay, they just ask you some generic questions to see whether you can progress to the next stage. Now, the other type is the face-to-face -face interview. Face-to-face -face interview, okay? It can be one-on-one. -on -one. It can be you sitting across 
also from another person. So the candidate sits on this side of the table, the interviewer sits on the other side of the table, okay, face to face. Okay, there can be the panel interview. Panel is you have a group of people. Um, the very first kind of interview I ever did in my life was a panel interview where I sat across about five people. Okay, and all those five people were asking me questions at different times and I had to answer them. Now, that panel interview also can be like a group interview, okay, where you have a group of candidates, not only you this time around, a group of candidates that are also interviewed with a panel, okay? And maybe when one candidate finishes, then he moves to the next stage, you know, but it is also a form of panel interview. And then you have the video interview. That's the Skype the zoom interview i'm sure a lot of us have watched this advert where there was a guy on the bus okay um the guy was on the bus and then it was time for his um they just called him for, uh, via zoom and the guy had to use some people to uh put a backdrop at the back so that nobody will know that he seated on the bus and um, he did the interview and he got a job that's a form of a video interview so there are four different types of major types of interview you have the telephone you have the face-to-face, -face, you have the panel interview, and then you have video. Video can be Skype, it can be Zoom, it can be a video conference of any kind. You know? So you need to be prepared for any type of this kind of interview that you are called to face. Okay, so it can be telephone, they can call you. So you need to watch your tone, your voice. You know, a lot of people the phone very casually and they just say hello you know and they talk as if they're in their bedroom so you need to be careful because you don't know the kind of call you can receive at any point in time okay so telephone interviews face-to-face -face interviews uh, panel interview okay it's also a face-to-face -face, but when i say face-to-face -face, i mean one-on-one -on -one. panel means a group of people and then the video interview okay um aramondo kone thank you for joining uh Amadou, Thank you. How is Abigail? I already did that you. Titi Taiwo, good to see you. Ochu Gladys, Finifolu, thank you for joining us. So let's move ahead. Now, what you need to do before the interview? Pre interview, what do you need to do? And at this, at this time, what you do before the interview matters a lot. It matters a lot. It can actually mess up if you don't get your pre interview very well. It can mess up the actual interview. So it's important that before the interview, you understand these next steps. If you can get these next steps very well, most likely you have a free interview. All right? So what do you do before the interview? Now, first thing I always want people to understand so that they can relax and be comfortable during the interview is that the interview is not an inquisition. Your interview is not an interrogation. You are not going to the police station to get interviewed. It's not as if you are going to interface with the EFCC or ICPC. No. So you need to relax. It's just an interview. You are going to be talking to somebody who doesn't have an idea about you or what you have done before. Both of you are complete strangers. Just like you are a stranger to the interviewer, okay? The interviewer is also a stranger to the candidate. So you need to relax. A lot of people before the interview, they are so uptight, they are so scared, they have butterflies in their stomach. Yes, well, it's natural. It's natural because you have not been there before. You don't know the kind of questions they want to ask you. But I want to please plead with you that you understand that the interview is not an inquisition. It's not an interrogation. You are not going to see an IPO at a police station where they will ask you, where's your license or you committed the crime no it's just an interview it's to talk about what you have done before or what you know or who you are so please always relax have that at the back of your mind i see a lot of candidates who are fretting who fret when they come into the interview room you know a lot of them their hands are so sweaty their palms they are so nervous the way they even sit on the chair they cannot sit properly because they are scared Please understand that the interview is not an inquisition, neither is it an interrogation. Neither is it an interrogation. Okay? Secondly, I want you to understand that um, there are certain things you need to do so that you can reduce uncertainties. 
certain things you need to do so that you can reduce uncertainties. Can you still see me? Can anybody still hear me? If you can hear me, can you signify? Oh, Ilani Shegun, thank you. STO, good to see you. Okay, I want to be sure that people are following tonight. Adeni Ikende, you are here. Thank you for joining. Please just indicate if you can still hear me clearly. I want to be sure that the um, internet is working very well. The Wi-Fi is working well. Gina Rukeme, good to see you. Can you all hear me clearly? If you can hear me, just indicate, please. Okay, Joe, you said, can I move the slides to slideshow mode so that the slides can be more visible? Oh, it's, it's not very visible. Original, can you hear me? If anybody can hear me, just indicate, please. Enna Horo, Okama, my very good friend. Good to have you here. Can you hear me? Just indicate so that I can move on. Sami, good to see you. Can you hear me? If it's clear... Can you hear me and can you see the slides? Please indicate if you can hear me. Just type that you can hear me and I'll see it. So I can move on. Please, if you can hear me, just indicate so I can move on. Adigwande Kunle, thank you. But can you hear me? Please indicate. Indicate if you can hear me. Can you hear me tonight? So please indicate if you can hear me. Okay, so before the interview, the first thing you need to do is to understand that the interview is not an inquisition, it's not an interrogation, okay? And then secondly, you need to reduce uncertainties. You need to be sure about the venue, okay? You need to be very, very sure about the venue. You know, there's no point that uh, it's on the day of the interview that you will now be trying to find your way. You don't have a description of the place. And then just one hour before the uh, interview, you are now running around trying to use Google Maps or trying to see if you can find your way. No, 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 no. That is already too late. You'll be messed up by the time you get to the interview venue. So you need to reduce certain uncertainties and be sure so that you can plot your roadmap, how you get there in time, you know, how you can be punctual before the interview. So be sure about the interview. Uh, be sure about the venue. If you're not sure... The time when you were called to uh, when they invited you for the interview, please ask questions. Okay, be sure about the time so that you don't get there late. Be very clear about the dress code. How do they want you to dress? If you are not sure about the dress code, please ask. Okay, and then ask for the person that we ask for when you get to the interview. So whoever calls you to invite you for the interview, please ask them. Oh. Do I ask for you when I get to the venue of the interview? Who do I ask for? So that you can reduce uncertainties. So the first thing is, understand that the interview is not an inquisition so that your mind can be at rest. Then you need to reduce uncertainties. Number three, please get a good night's sleep. All right? It's just an interview. Okay? You are not going to jail. It's just a job. And I can assure you, if that particular one, you don't get it, you'll get another one. So get a good night's sleep. The reason is, you don't want to get there stressed up. You don't want to get there with bags under your eyes. Okay? So, please sleep, relax, 
so that your brain can be clear declutter your mind free your mind okay before you sleep you can play some good music for you to ease off some stress okay you can even dance a bit and then go and sleep let your mind be clear declutter your mind okay so that you are not stressed when you are um, going for the interview number four make sure your clothes are ready a day before it is not on the day of the interview that you'll start looking for the clothes you're going to wear no that will be too late so a day before arrange your clothes lay it out clearly somewhere high on it very well ensure it is not rumpled at all okay hang it somewhere very neatly so that the next day you just you know shower have your bath and then you put on your clothes now number five you need to research the company and the job role i, I see too many people come on prepared for interviews they sit across the interviewer and they are asking please can you tell me about your company or can you tell me about this role i mean that is totally wrong you need to research the company and the job role before the interview. Okay, go online. If you know the name of the company, and most likely you will know the name of the company. Okay, so go online. Get the company's name. Okay, search for the company. What do they do? Who are their distributors? Where is the company based? Do they have branches? Who is the MD? Who is the chairman? Who are the directors? Okay, and then look up your own job role. Okay, if they invite you for sales and marketing, what are the functions? What are you expected to do? And this also dovetails into the next one, which is for you to connect with the company's contact if you know any. So if you, if for example, um, company A calls you for an interview, and then you know somebody who works in company A, connect with them, talk with them, okay? Ask them questions about the job role, about the company the more informed you are about that company the better you can prepare for that interview okay the more informed that you are about that company the better you can prepare for that um for that job role number seven get all your documents ready and put them somewhere very neatly it is not on the day of the interview that you start to look for your documents that will be too late okay so if you need to take your credentials along a copy of your cv even if they don't ask you to bring a copy of your CV, please take it along. Very, very important. If they don't ask you to bring a copy of your CV, please ensure you still take it along. Okay? If you need to take multiple copies along, maybe two, please take two or three along. And all your credentials. Put them clearly into, you know, maybe um, a bag where they are all going to be arranged very neatly. And then you take that along so get all your doc documents ready and put them somewhere where you can have easy access to them and then you practice interview questions there are more questions that you can practice okay so those are the things you need to do before the interview you need to understand that an interview is not an inquisition you're not going to be interrogated it's just an interview okay try as much as possible to reduce the uncertainties be sure about the venue be sure about the time be sure about the dress code you don't want to appear dressed like an entertainer to um, a bank interview, okay? So reduce all those uncertainties, okay? Get a good night's sleep. Make sure your mind is at rest. Get your clothes ready. Research the job and the company. And then connect with any contact if you know any. And then let's just go for the interview. Now, there are 10 critical areas, 10 critical things that I personally look for anytime I have to interview candidates. Okay, and um, almost on a monthly basis, I'm interviewing people and I just want to share, you know, from the experience, uh, you know, uh, some of the people that I've interfaced with, you know, some of the things they've done right, some of the things they've done wrong. And it was through this process that I was able to get some of these 10 major things that I look for. Now, the first thing I look for anytime I interview people is I look forward to a great introduction, a great introduction how you start that interview matters if you can grab the attention of your interviewer in the first 30 seconds to one minute of the interview believe me more than half of that interview job is done so you need to grab the attention of the person who is interviewing you and it starts with how you introduce yourself most likely the first question you're going to be asked is can you tell me a little about yourself 
So that is an opportunity that you must not fail to latch on. You must introduce yourself in a very energetic manner. Let it be very catchy. Your introduction must be very brief. It should not be something that will be verbose so that you don't lose them. Okay? Something not more than two minutes is fine. And you can actually say enough in two minutes, between two to three minutes. So it should not be something that you say in 30 seconds and they will say, is that all? But it should not also be something that will be verbose. So it should be catchy. It should be brief. And your introduction must contain some significant information that is not necessarily found on your CV. Okay? So maybe there are certain things you have done. Maybe you have written a book. Okay? Or maybe there's a publication that is at the press. Or you have written some articles. Okay? But it is not necessarily a feature on your CV. Then that's an avenue for you to talk about them. So it must contain some significant information that is not necessarily found on your CV. And when you are introducing yourself, it's not just for you to repeat everything that is on your CV. Now, don't forget that the interviewer has your CV right in front of him. He can see it. So he's looking forward to, or he or she is looking forward to hearing about something else that is not on that CV. So that introduction should contain something significant that may not necessarily be on that CV. So please don't repeat everything you have had. My name, my name is Adebayo Adeyinka. Of course, he knows that your name is Adebayo Adeyinka. Okay, and I was born so so so. You can see that on your CV already. So don't repeat everything you have on your CV. I went to so 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 primary school after primary school, and I went to Fred Government College, done as my secondary school after secondary school, and I went to Lado Kakitola University of Technology as my university after university, and I went to SAP. No, that's wrong. So don't repeat everything you have on your CV. So your introduction must be catchy. Okay, it must be brief. Okay, it must contain significant information that is not necessarily found on your CV. Usually, when I get interviewed, I tell people that I'm an author. It might not necessarily be on my CV. At the time, I didn't put it on my CV, but now I have it there. But before it was on my CV, I tell them that I write books and I write articles. And you'll be surprised that the next question will be about the book that I've written. And then we're actually having a nice conversation. You will be you will most likely be successful if you can turn your interview into a conversation. Can I say that again? Most likely you are going to be successful if you can turn that engagement, that interview into a conversation. So that should be something that you should attempt to do right from the time you are introducing yourself. Attempt to turn that interview into a conversation. So that it becomes a conversation. It flows. And that comes from when you are able to share certain information that is very important and critical, but most likely might not be on your CV. They'll be interested and they want to hear more from you. And from there, their interest is already aroused in you and then you can take it from there. Okay, so let's look at the second thing. The second thing we look for, the second thing I look for is your confidence. Your confidence. And how do I gauge your confidence as an interviewer? Now, your level of confidence is revealed by Number one, the way you walk into the room. Now, I tell people when you walk into the room where you're going to be interviewed, you must walk with your head raised high. Don't walk with your shoulders hunched. Okay? Chest out. Walk with confidence. Okay? The person that wants to interview you does not know you. You don't also know the person. So, I mean, you are both strangers. So, there's nothing to be confused about, nothing to be afraid of. So the way you walk into the room, your aura, your personality, you know, will be revealed to the person who is going to interview you. So it's important that you walk in the right manner, walk upright, your heads raised, your shoulders not hunched, okay, and walk with your shoulders, your chest out, and walk with confidence. Your level of confidence is revealed by the way you sit. Some people sit slouched. You know on their seats a lot of times i have to tell people please can you sit properly okay so the way you sit also matters sit with your back on the chair okay don't fret some will just sit as if they're in their sitting room okay sit very well sit properly if you want if you are comfortable with crossing your legs please do it but with confidence otherwise sit very well with your hands your two hands upon your laps 
okay? Not actually on the table of the interviewer, all right? So the way you sit actually matters. Your body language matters. We can gauge your confidence through your body language. Um, some people will be rubbing their hands. It's a sign of being nervous. It's a sign of nervousness when you are rubbing your hands, when you are you know, knocking your knees together. Some will sit down and then they are knocking their knees together. Okay? Some will sit down with their arms, their arms crossed across their chest like this. Okay? It shows you are nervous. So you need to relax. Your body language will reveal your level of confidence. Then smile. One of the best things you can do during an interview is just to have a smile plastered on your face. Now, please, you have to also watch it. Don't let it be a smile that will make every other person in the room to be laughing. Because it becomes so plastic and then it becomes so fake. Okay, but smile. With every question, let there be a smile on your face. You know, there's, some, there are, there's something about a smile. You know, it opens doors. It can melt the heart of the person that is even interviewing you. So smile. Okay, then the way you answer questions also shows your level of confidence. I tell a lot of people, please minimize your mannerisms. When you are saying, um, 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 you see, you see, um, okay, no, the way you answer questions also show, it shows your level of confidence. Okay, so if you have some bad mannerisms, most of us do, okay, I also have, and I try to watch it. So you need to practice before the interview so that you can gain a greater level of confidence. Then your energy level, your energy level will show your confidence. Some people walk into the room and you just see a lot of energy. Okay, the way you talk, your intonation, your voice. There should be a lot of energy in your voice. I'm not saying you shout the room down, but don't make it so that your interviewer will be saying, sorry, we cannot hear you. Can you speak up? Can you raise your voice? When they begin to tell you like that, you're already losing your interviewers. So a lot of people, you'll just be speaking, and it shows that you're nervous. They can hardly hear you, but speak up show some kind of energy in your body, in your intonation, in the way you carry yourself. Don't be a low energy person. Okay, so the confidence, your confidence is the second thing that we usually want to say. Thank you, those who are joining. Joshua, you can hear me. Thank you. So good to see you. Dada Kazim, thank you. Oh, Ebenezer Adeyika, my brother is here. Okay, soon come doctor. Thank you for joining. It's up, man. Hey, Martin, it's good to see you. It's been quite a while. Okay, so we have taken two things now. We've looked at a great introduction, and then we've looked at the confidence. So let's look at the third thing, your CV. You know, we're talking about 10 things I look for when I interview. Your CV. Now, that word, curriculum vitae, is actually taken from a Latin word. And that Latin word actually means course of life. That word CV, curriculum vitae, is a Latin word from a Latin word. The root word is from Latin, and it means course of life. So when you understand these concepts, it reshapes your thinking about how your CV should be. It means course of life. Course of life means give me the trajectory of your life written out on a piece of paper. So for some, their course of life can just be one page. It means give me a summary of your life, a summary of your achievements, of your professional attainments, a summary of things about you, your course of life. So for some, it might just be one page. For some, it might be two pages. For some, it might be three pages or even more. But you need to understand that CV actually means course of life. So everything about you. In its summary. So if I don't even need to interface with you, if I don't see you, if I see your CV, then I know a lot about you. I have all the required information that I'm able to use to make a decision. So your CV is course of life. Now, your CV must be well laid out in the right formats. And I'm going to talk about CV formats shortly. So it has to be well laid out in the right format. It must be arranged to show your work experience. Now, uh, when I talk about uh, the CV format, you will understand why, for some, it will be with the most recent coming first. At times, it doesn't have to be that every time. Okay? I will explain that under the CV format. 
Okay, your CV must have all relevant information about your experience, about your education, about your achievements, about your awards. It must have everything. Now, please, I beg you, avoid typos. Avoid typos on your CVs. I've seen a lot of people will bring CV and then I'm looking at the CVs and I'm seeing that the guy did not even write his name very well. There's a mistake in the name. There's a mistake in how he spelled the name of the school. Okay. And you see typos all over. Now, what typos reveal is that you don't pay attention to details. Okay. Imagine applying for work in a bank and then your CV is full of typos. The impression you are giving to me is that I cannot put you where there's cash. You are going to make mistakes. You are not going to pay attention to details. You are not going to be diligent. Okay, so your CV must have no typos. I know a lot of people give other people their CVs to help them type out. Please, take personal responsibility for your CV. I've had a lot of people tell me, oh, sorry, it was somebody I gave to type. I said, no, you can't say that. This is your life. Your CV is your course of life. If somebody makes an error about your course of life, there's a problem with you. So your CV must have no typos. It is your course of life. So don't allow any typo. Go through it. Go through it very well. Make sure you dot every I, you cross every T. It is very, very important. Typos show that you do not pay attention to details. It shows that you are not organized. And nobody wants to hire somebody who is not organized. Your CV represents who you are. That is you. Okay, so no typos then. Don't lie on your CV, please. No lies. Uh, I remember a short while ago, I interviewed a guy. And the first thing I saw when he came in, I said, how old are you? And then the guy mentioned his age. And I said, when were you born? And the guy was scratching his head before he could tell me um, the year he was born. And of course, I knew my gut feelings that was lying. So, and I asked him, when, which year did you finish your primary school? And when he told me the year, apparently he must have finished his primary school when he was one year old, okay? And that is what happens when you lie on your CV. At the end of the day, it turned out that the job he was even applying for, there were no age restrictions. So there was just no reason for him to apply. And of course, that's an integrity issue. So when you tell lies like that, it shows that you do not have integrity and nobody wants to hire anybody who doesn't have integrity, especially in a very sensitive situation or position. So don't lie on your CVs, please. And know your own CV. Know it. You know, there are instances where you are asking questions directly from the CV. And the person who wrote the CV, you know, does not even understand the CV that he has written. So you tell the person, okay, you wrote in your CV that you did this publication um when you were in your final year and then you read it out and then the guy is just looking at you like that and then he's saying please can you say that again okay so you need to know your own cv own it and know it so that you can defend it at any point in time you know the interview actually gives you an opportunity to defend what you have done before so if you have done it then you should be able to defend it so you must know your own cv now let's talk about the content of a cv the content of a CV. Are you still there? Okay. Oh no, Wale Shagun, you're listening. Thank you. Akimbu, Miyaki Sholakinde. For me, Ola Tono. Good to see you. Mustafa Dele, yeah. Ah, good to see you, bro. Titi, my Titi. Oh, thank you for being here. I think we you about today. Wow, you are here tonight. Good to see you, sis. And thank you for all you do. We're so proud of you. Okay. All right. Content of a CV. Let's talk about content of a CV. Um, there are eight major contents of a CV, eight major contents of a CV. Number one is your contact information. Very, very important. Your contact information, the CV must contain your full name, okay? It must have your address. I live at road, this, house, this, this is my street. So it must have your full name. It must have your address. It must have your email, okay? And it must have your phone number. Now, I want to uh, beg, uh, let me use the word beg, okay? People who are listening to me, please, don't put funny emails. I've seen people use funny email addresses, very funny, that, that are spooky in nature, okay? Please, it's important that you get, you know, you know, you know somebody puts, you're applying for a job role in a bank, and you're putting sexy, not, 
at yahoo.com doesn't actually go well, doesn't speak well. So please mind the kind of email that address that you also use. Some of us need to go back and clean up, you know, some of our emails. You need to go and clean up, you know, it's so important. So your full name should be there, um, your address, your email, and then your phone number. Please put an active phone number. Don't put a, a number that you have lost or a number that belongs to another person. Some people put their wife's number. Imagine that they call and then they call your wife and then your wife picks it up and says it is wrong number because they are asking for you. It's not her that they are asking for. So it's important put a phone number that is active, a phone number that you use. I'd rather you put a phone number that is active than put two inactive numbers. Some people will put two numbers. Well, if you have two lines, that is fine. And those two numbers are active. They are okay. But please ensure your number is very active. Ensure your email is the email address that you always check. Don't put a Yahoo mail when it is the Gmail. You always check every time. And then you check the Yahoo mail once a week. No. Okay? It's important that you understand that your CV must have your full contact information. Secondly, it must have your academic history. Your academic history, your primary school, your secondary school. If you have postgraduate um, education, you, you must put it there. So your academic history. It must have your professional experience. Your CV must have your professional experience. What you have done, between what period to what period. It must have your professional experience. You must be able to detail your experience. Say very specifically what you have done in this company, in this company, in this company. Okay? So it must state your professional experience. And, you know, when you are stating your professional experience, you are able to state your achievements also. So, for instance, if you are working in the financial services sector and you have, you have some kind of experience, maybe in a particular area, you should be able to state it very clearly. I worked as team lead consumer banking and this was my achievement between 2020 2012 to 2014 i was able to grow my deposit by 200 million i was able to meet so 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 in my pbt between this period so your professional experience must be detailed okay so that you can have a conversation around it so talk specifically about what you have done before about your experience don't just say i worked in company a two years company b 2014 to 2016 company c 2016 to 2018 company d 2018 till date that doesn't say anything you should be able to give in bullet point or bullet format what did you do in company a what was your experience there what did you achieve there what did you achieve in company b what did you achieve in company c just imagine Somebody who has a plain CV, who just wrote his professional experience, just mentioned the name of the companies, and then you see another person who was able to state that, when I was in company A, I helped them to achieve 20% growth in their profitability over two years. I helped to reduce the cost by 10% between 2012 to 2014. Who do you think they want to listen to? So it's important that Olore Dete Miloluwa don't worry, you, there's still time for questions, okay? Let me just finish with this and then we'll take questions. So hold your questions, okay? Now, so professional experience, it's important that you state what you have been able to do, what you have achieved, and your experience, okay? Then, number four, your qualifications and your skills. Your qualification and your skills. So you have, you are a chartered accountant, you have ACCA, you have CIBN, you have um, um, CFA, you know, you have MBA. You should be able to state your qualification and then your major skills. I'm skilled in data analysis. Um, I can use this and this. I can use Python. I can code. That is one of the things. Those are one of the, of the things that you should also put on your CV, your qualification and your skills. Then you should be able to mention your awards and your honors very important if um, for example where i've worked before there was a place where i worked before where i got the md's um uh, personal recognition twice 
okay you wrote a personal letter to me commending them this commendation letter twice so it is on my cv i wrote it there it's an award okay got and this commendation this year got and this commendation this year so it's an award any award that you get please put it on your cv any honors that you get please put it on your cv during my career i mean over the course of my career there was a particular year when i actually got the highest transaction one particular transaction the highest in all of nigeria in fact in all of africa for that particular bank that year it's on my cv i put it there 2011 the highest so 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 transaction in the whole of africa so it's it's something that i did it's my achievement it's something that is clear it's something that they can verify so i put it on my cv so if you have an award you have some honors please put it on your cv okay publications and presentations also you know, I mentioned earlier that I am an author. So I put that right there on my CV that I've actually written three books. And then you'll be, you, it will not be a surprise that they want to listen to me. They want to ask me about the books that I've written. And I tell them a little bit about the books. And don't forget that I said that you will achieve a lot if you are able to turn your interview into a conversation. Turn your interview. That should actually be your focus try and make an attempt to turn your interview into a conversation okay and one of the things you can do it is by putting out your publications by putting out your presentations just to ensure that whatever publication or presentation will not be something that will be controversial okay there are certain things that are off limits when we are doing interviews for me basically I, I don't think it is right for you to discuss politics i don't think it is right for you to discuss religion Okay, I don't think it is right for you to discuss tribe or race during interviews. So if you have some publications along that line, please don't mention them. It can be controversial. Okay, it can be controversial. So stay, stay clearly off controversial topics. And for me, politics is controversial, religion is controversial, you know, um, tribe or race is controversial. The person who is interviewing me, I don't care whether the person is APC or PDP. Come on, I need a job. I need a job. So that is not an avenue, an opportunity for you to be discussing politics. So if it's about your publication, please take clear of controversy, okay? So mention your publications and mention your presentations, especially if they are in the public domain, okay? Number seven, mention professional associations that we belong to, okay? Mention them. If you are, belong to JCI, you will be shocked that maybe the person that is sitting across the table is also a JCI alumnus. So maybe you are a member of the Rotary Club. Please mention it. Who knows? The person might be a member of Rotary Club or you're a member of Lion or Lioness Club. Please state those professional associations, maybe CIBN or other um, uh, associations that you may belong to, okay? Whether professional or not, please state them. And then your certifications, okay? State your certifications very clearly. So those are the major areas, the eight areas of a CV. Let me just recap your contact information, your academic history, professional experience, your qualification and skills, your awards and honors. Okay, your award and honors, your publications and presentations. Professional associations and then your certifications. And then your certification. Okay, let's move ahead tonight. Okay, let's look at CV formats. Let's look at CV formats. We want to look at the different... There are three major CV formats. Some other people will tell you five, six, but all of them are just categorized into three broad categories, okay? You have the chronological format, you have the functional format, and you have the one that is a combination of both, a hybrid of chronological and functional. Okay, let me say that again. There are three major broad formats of cvs okay you have the chronological formats you have the functional and then you have the combination now the chronological is the most common type that is where after you have given us your contact information the academic history will come first okay that is the schools you attended primary school secondary school university okay and then postgraduates and then after that will come your professional experience and then professional experience also you list it according to from the inception the way you started 
So I started my career in year 2000. I worked with so, 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 so between 2000 to 2007. Then I joined Bank B 2007 to 2009. Then I worked for this telecom company 2009 to 2014. Then I was so that one is in a chronological arrangement from when you you know started till the very current, very recent time. Now that chronological format is best used when you have been in consistent employment within the same industry or when your work experience also shows advancement. Those are the two times that I personally recommend that you use the chronological format. The first time is you have been in consistent employment within the same industry. For instance, now, I've been a banker for about 20 years, and I've worked across seven banks. Okay, I've been a banker for 20 years, I've worked across seven banks. So when I want to do my CV, I do it in a chronological format. From year 2000, when I started to work as a banker, Okay, Bank A 2000 to 2002, Bank B 2002 to 2004, Bank C 2006 to 2000, 2005 to 2008, Bank uh, D 2008 to 2012, and it comes down until it gets to where you are presently. That's chronological. So it's best used when you have, number one, consistent employment within the same industry, or secondly, when your work experience shows advancement. So, so that's when I actually encourage that people use that chronological format. It is not every time. That's why I tell people you can actually adjust your CV to reflect whatever you are applying for. So your CV should not be one size fits all. It should not be the same thing every time. You should also, every time you even have an additional skill or experience, you must be updating your CV. So it cannot be the same thing every time. Because the organizations you are uh, uh, um you are applying to, they are not the same. Their requirements are not the same. So the first format is chronological. The second one is functional. Bumi, Anola BC, how are you doing? How is professor? Thank you for joining us. Amid Aziz, thank you, thank you. Daphne Gele, Oye Lola, Daniel Olushayo, Anolu Wako, awesome. Thank you. Ola Yemi Samuel, good to have you around here. So the second format is the functional type, the functional format. Now, when you're looking at the functional format, you are placing more emphasis on your skills, on your awards, and on your honors, okay? And I usually recommend that functional when you are a fresh, uh, a fresh graduate. So if you're a fresh graduate, I usually tell people, try to use the functional type. You will be focusing more on your skills, focus more on your awards, focus more on your honors, okay? Because the truth is, as a fresh graduate, you don't really have a lot of experience. So there is no professional experience that you want to detail. There's no professional experience that you want to list out. And then most likely your academic history is also limited. So it is better in that wise to use the functional CV format. Now, if you also have multiple gaps in your employment history, maybe you have been out of job for some time. I also encourage you to also use the functional format. Because if you use the chronological, the interviewer will quickly pick up the gaps. Now, we are not saying you should lie about the gaps. But when you use the chronological format, it will be glaring because they'll be able to say, okay, between 2014 and 2016, what happened? There's a gap. And then you will now start to explain. But if you use the functional format, which places more emphasis on your skills, on your awards, on your honors, most likely that question will never be asked because what they'll be focusing on will be your skills, what you can do. They'll be focusing on your awards, you know, things you have gotten, and your honors. So I recommend that when you're a fresh graduate, when you have multiple gaps in your employment history, or when you are changing careers. Because if you are changing careers now, let's say, for example, you want to migrate from the banking sector to the telecom sector, okay? You can decide to use the functional, which will actually place emphasis on your skills, on your awards, and on your honors. Then number three is for you to use a combination. A combination means a hybrid of the two. So a part is chronological, and then a part also talks about your skills and your awards and your honors. A part is functional. Okay? Now, if you are doing a hybrid, what you place first, what comes first, whether it's your academic history and professional experience, or your skills, awards, and honors, whatever you place first depends on your career goals. It depends on your experience. And it depends on what you think is most relevant to what you are seeking for. 
So if what you are seeking for, what is most relevant to you, is for you to place your skills and awards and honors first, please do it. Okay? If what is very relevant to you is about the career goals or your experience, then put your professional experience and your academic history first. But these are the three major CV formats. Chronological, functional, and combination. Okay, okay, it's okay. Thank you. Erase more wall. Thank you. Balogo Said Olaji, they good to have you here again. Larry Mui Watimoti, thank you. Olushe Gunduro Dola, you can hear me very well. Thank you. Julius Oluadara Simi, thank you. Ade Law Wall, Ubuntola, welcome. Onyade King Crown, Modet Onyibo, good to have you here. So we've spoken about the CV formats. And if you have any questions, please just hold them. I will have time to attend to questions. So we've spoken about the CV. Don't forget the things we have spoken about. We started with a great introduction, okay? And then we said you must have a high level of confidence. Those are some of the things I look for. I look at your CV. Your CV is your cause of life. And we've spoken about the content of the CV, CV format. Then the next thing we want to talk about is you need to know about my company. I'm the one interviewing you right now. You need to know about my company. And you need to know about the role you have been interviewed for. Too many people walk into those interview rooms ignorantly. And ignorance is not an excuse. Somebody sits across me on the panel or a face-to-face one-on-one interview and say, excuse me, sir, please, what is the name of your company? Come on. That's the fox part. I mean, that is totally unacceptable. Okay? So you need to know about that company. You need to know about the role you are being interviewed for. You need to know about the role you are being interviewed for. Go online before. These are some of the things you need to have done before the interview. These are some of the things you need to have done before the interview. Know about that company. Know about the role. Okay? And this is what you should know. You should know the company's profile. The company's profile. What do they do? For how long have they been in existence? Most of these companies, you will see them online. There will be one information or the other about them online. What's their profile? They were established in 1965. Shows you that that company has had a succession of people who have led that company. Okay? If they're on the stock exchange, you need to know. Well, are there any significant shareholders? Okay? So you need to know the company's profile. Where are they? How many branches do they have in Nigeria? Do they have branches offshore? Okay? Do they have a holding? Do they have a holding um, um, structure? Sorry, I'm having a few problems with the slides here. Oh, oh. Can you still hear me? Okay, so the company's profile, it's important to understand the company's profile. And then the next thing you need to know is the management profile. Who is the managing director? Who is the chairman? Right? Do they have executive directors? Who are the major, you know, um, management, the management team leading that company? So it's good you know uh, you have their profile. Know the name of the MD. Know the name of the chairman. It, it, it might make it even easier for you, especially if they are on the panel and then you are seeing them. You can actually match the face you have seen online, you know, together with those people who are interfacing with you. So know the company's profile. The management profile is very important. Know about their products and, or services. You can't go for an interview and you don't know about their product. You don't know what they do. You don't know what they sell. You don't know the kind of product that they, I mean, sell to the public, the kind of service that they render. So know the products, know their services. And if you go online, you will see it. Please take your time to do your research about the company. Know about their key competitors. Know about the sector. Read a little bit about the sector. You're going for a banking interview. Know a little bit about the banking industry. Know the names of the banks that um, are operating in that space. If it's a particular bank that is going to interview you, Look at that bank. Is it a tier one bank? Is it a tier two? Is it a tier three bank? 
if it's tier one, who are the other banks in the tier in the tier one space? Those are the competitors. You should be able to know them, know what they also offer. So read up about the key competitors and about the sector. You should also know the company aspirations, their future plans. Do they plan to grow organically? Do they plan to expand beyond the Nigerian market? Is there something in the news about them? Okay. Then know the demands of the role you have been interviewed for. You should know it. Is it a sales role? Is it a, 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 an operations role? Is it back office? Is it a technical role? Most likely when you are being invited for the interview, they would have written it there. You have been invited, you know, because you applied for so, 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 so role. So know the demands of that role. Know your job description. So let's talk about communication now. And this is very, very critical because uh, this forms the basis of the interview. It's all about communication. Okay. And there are some basic things in communication. When you are asked that a question, when you ask the question, please answer directly. Don't beat around the bush. Just answer directly. Go straight to the answer. Okay. Don't beat around the bush. Don't tell stories. Okay. Just go straight to the answer. So answer questions directly. Now, when you answer or when you discuss, don't use monosyllables. Don't use one word answer. Some people will just sit down there and all they will say is yes, no, yes, no, maybe, correct, yes. No, 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 that's not an interview. So don't use monosyllables and don't use one word answers. Okay? Don't use one word answers. When they ask you a question, please try to explain a little bit. Now, it doesn't mean you have to be verbose, but answer directly, but also explain. Okay, so don't make it one word answers. Don't make it monosyllables. It will be very boring. Don't be a boring individual during your interview. Be very engaging. Your communication should be engaging. You must be an interesting person to converse with. Okay, you must be very interesting. You see, if, if there's no time an interviewer sees a very interesting candidate, you know, it's like the interview should never end. Okay, so engage. Engage. Don't just do the interview as if, I'm, I, I can't wait for me to get out of this room. No. Engage. Be very interesting and be very dynamic. Okay? And it comes from your level of confidence. Okay? You also need to listen attentively. Listen. Pay attention to the questions that I have. Now, if you don't understand the question, please ask again. There's nothing wrong with it. Please, can, can you take that again? Excuse me. Pardon me, please. I didn't get that very clearly. Please, can you repeat it? There's nothing wrong with that. But listen attentively. Listen, now, don't interrupt the interviewer. If I'm asking you a question, please let me finish. If I am saying something, if I'm making a statement, allow me to finish. Don't jump in. Don't preempt me. Don't interrupt me. When you keep on jumping, when your interviewer is asking questions and you keep on interrupting, you keep on jumping, it shows you are rude. It shows you are impatient. What you're telling me is you are rude, you are uncalf, you are impatient. Okay? So don't interrupt the interviewer. Allow the interviewer to land. Okay? And then you take it from there. I've said it earlier. Ask me if you don't understand the question. Okay? And this does not fail. Always use a relevant story to pass across your point. Everybody wants to listen to a very beautiful story. If I ask you a question and you have a particular story that you can actually use to pass across your point. Please, your real life experience, share it. It shows me that you have experience in that area. So use a relevant story to pass across your point. It will sell you more. It will sell you more. Okay, now let's look at your personal grooming. Your personal grooming. That's the way you dress. That's the way you look. Your appearance. Now, appearance is very key. You know, a lot of people will say the way you dress, is the way you will be addressed okay and it is very true that's your packaging in fact that's the first thing i see when you enter your room apart from using it to gauge your level of confidence the first thing because i've never spoken to you before i have not seen you before the first thing i see is your appearance and you see your appearance will create the first impression the first impression that is created is by your appearance it's not even by what you speak so give me an opportunity to be able to listen to you very well by the way you appear. You know, the way some people appear, you just want them to disappear immediately. 
the way some people appear, you can't wait for them to disappear, to just get out of the room because appearance is poor. Okay, but when you appear very well, when your appearance is good, when you have this good grooming, your personal grooming is beautiful. Okay, all I'm just 50% of the job is done. All I'm waiting for is for the right things to come out of your mouth. So if you have the right appearance and then your communication is wonderful, believe me, believe me, you are right on target. Okay, but if your appearance is poor, then you will be a hard sell even listening to you. Okay, a lot of people say don't judge a book by its cover. Unfortunately, it's the cover we will see very first now. It is when we now open the cover that we now see whether the book is rubbish or the book is good. But the cover has to be attractive. The packaging has to be attractive so that it can lure me to buy. So packaging is almost everything. So the way you appear, your personal grooming is important. I encourage people, please accept otherwise stated during your interview, wear cool and conservative colors. Especially if you're looking for work in a structured organization. Now, if you're looking for work in the entertainment industry, it's a whole different ball game entirely. You can go there with dreads, go there with multiple colors, go there with, you know, fancy food jackets and all that. But apart from that kind of industry, apart from that entertainment branding and all of that, if you're going to go for any interview in a structured organization, please wear cool and conservative colors. Okay? Cool and conservative. And when I'm talking about cool and conservative for men, blue, black, gray. I encourage people don't do brown suits. Don't do outlandish colors. Don't come for an interview as a guy wearing green suits. Don't appear like a magician. Okay? When you're not a magician's apprentice. You know, green suit, purple tie, and all that. Now, if you're going for branding interview or whatever, that might be fantastic. Okay? You might need to demonstrate some little craziness in those areas. Okay? And show that you are different from every other person. That's fine. But if it's a structured organization, maybe a, a law firm a bank, you know, telecoms, and a lot of all these companies, FMCGs, oil and gas, and all that, please wear cool and conservative colors. Okay, for men, blue, black, gray. Women is not also too far away from that. Even though women can play around with colors a little bit. But wear cool and conservative colors. Now, I also encourage you, wear light cologne or perfume. Okay, your perfume. Wear some something light now. Don't let your perfume be so strong or too strong that by the time you enter a place, everybody is sneezing because your perfume is too strong. Okay? Please, let it be light and um, some perfume so that you can smell nice. <laughs> I remember that interview, that you smell nice interview. Okay? So that you can smell nice. So wear light cologne, wear light perfume. Smell nice. You know, some... Some of you, some, some of the guys might be coming from the sun. You are coming, you are dropping from an Okada. Oh, and, and you know our weather. So much sweat, so much humidity. You don't want to start, you know, giving some body odor. So please wear some light cologne or perfume. For guys, especially, please use some deodorant, okay? And for ladies to use deodorant so that you are not all sweaty and then you can also smell nice. Now, men should always put on a jacket or wear a suit. Always put on a jacket, wear a suit, a good dress for women. Okay? I tell people, please use fresh mint to avoid mouth odor. Use fresh mint to avoid mouth odor. I'm not saying that inside that interview you'll be chewing mint or be chewing gum. No, that's rude. But before you get there, use the fresh mint. Because you may need to sit down for a long time. And if your mouth is closed... You know, your mouth is closed for about one hour or two hours. Just do ha like this. A lot of us, the mouth, the odor would have changed. So use fresh mint. You have some of these sprays that have been sold by these pharmaceutical companies. You know, hide one in your jacket and just bring it out and just spray it. <laughs> some spots. Okay? So that is after, of course, you must have brushed your teeth very well. You must have brushed your teeth very well before the interview. Please, brush your teeth very well before the interview. And focus on your tongue because a lot of that odor is coming from your tongue. You have eaten full food the night before. You have eaten a bar. You have eaten a goosey. You have eaten garlic and all that. Okay? You don't want to open your mouth and everybody's running away from you. So focus on your tongue 
and brush it very well. Scrape your tongue and then use fresh mint so that you avoid, but, uh, you avoid mouth odor. Two kinds of odors that can chase people away from an interview, body odor and mouth odor. And some people don't even know that um, um, they even have uh, body odor. So please, ensure that the jacket you are wearing for the interview is not one jacket you have worn sometimes ago that you didn't wash and you just went and you kept it in your wardrobe and then you pick it again and then you wear it for that interview. It will smell. It will smell. Timmy talk back day, you said, come early enough to take some fresh air or have time to freshen up. Fantastic. Very true. That's why you must be punctual. Usually when I attend interviews, I get there so early and the first place I ask for is the bathroom. I ask for the convenience, I ask for the bathroom. I go there. I go to clean my face again. Okay? I use their water there, clean my face so that I'm fresh. If you have some powder, lay this, put it on your face right there. Freshen up again. Put on some makeup again. Redo your makeup. There, you can put some gum, okay? And chew it right there so that you can freshen your breath. Or bring that mouth spray and spray it. Okay, or you have some small perfume that I've kept in your pocket somewhere, very small, those small ones, you know, just bring it out and, you know, just spray it. So come early enough to take some fresh air or to have time to freshen up. So it's always important. Men, put on socks if you are wearing a suit or jacket. I know the fact nowadays, you see a lot of people will be putting on tie, putting on a jacket and then they will not put on socks. I shouldn't be seeing your skin. I shouldn't be seeing your hand cool. I should not be seeing your skin. Put on socks if you're wearing a suit or jacket. I mean, seeing your skin can be very distracting. And then your colors must match. Your colors must match. No color riots, please. No color riot, please. Thank you for joining Adeli Big Baby Victor, Wali Adele K, Uche, Gina Rukeme. You smell nice. <laughs> you too, you smell nice. Then we talk back, Adele, my very good friend, all the way from Canada. Thank you. Adele, your birthday. Ezekaya, good to have you here. Okay, so your colors must match. Okay, please don't do color riots. Except, like I said, you are into branding, you are into entertainment, and all that and all that. That's fine. Okay, there are no streets out of, out of fast rules in those areas, but your colors must match. Okay, if you are wearing brown belts, then you are wearing brown shoes. You are wearing, you are putting on black belt you are putting on black shoes okay there's a way your tie your tie the tip of your tie for guys must touch your belt the tip of your belt you will see some people they will put on their tie and then their tie will be so short that it will just be hanging on top of their stomach like this that's a wrong way to put on a tie okay your tie the tip must just touch the tip of your belt all right so it's important your and you must have good shoes polished Polished. Polished. Your shoes must be well polished. So personal grooming is a must. Personal grooming is a must. And I tell people, when you are sitting down, okay, you unbutton your jacket. When you are standing up, you can also uh, button your jacket again. That's the rule. Okay? But be confident in your personal grooming. Dress very well. Conservative colors. I usually wear white shirts. But I tell people, your color should be conservative, white shirt, blue shirt, you know, something like that. But I usually, you can't go wrong with white. You can't go wrong with a white shirt. So you can never catch me in any other color. I'm talking about official dressing now. You can't catch me in any other, I only wear white. That's all I wear. And then your white shirt can go with any type of tie, any color of tie. Okay? So wear cool and wear conservative um, colors. So let's talk about the three major skills that I look for. When I interview, I look for three major skills. Engineer Puma, MC Puma, good to have you. I'm, I'm Mojola Jesu for Laoye. Thank you. Ade Yemiroti Mitimoti. Thank you. Oh, my childhood friend is here. Ade Yemo Yabode. Thank you so much for joining. So good to have you here. Okay, so three major skills that I look for when I interview. Three major skills. I look for employability skills. I look for transferable skills. And then I look for technical skills. Okay, employability, transferable, and technical skills. So let me just speak about this briefly because I need to um, quickly bring this to an end. Now, for employability skills, these are essential skills, you know, values and personal qualities that help you to thrive in the workplace. Those are skills, general skills. You can call them general skills. 
that anybody should have. It will help you to thrive, you know, in the workplace. Dayoderinu, thank you for coming. Kade, you said clean white shirt. Well, yes, that will be clean, not brown. You know, not shirts that are already brown or they are grayed. You know, please. Clean white shirts. <laughs> clean white shirt. Okay, so employability skills are the general skills. Okay, essential skills, your personal qualities, your values that enable you to thrive in the workplace. So we're talking about communication. So you must be able to communicate clearly, be able to speak very well. Please practice your grammar, practice your pronunciation. Don't go there and be firing shots, firing guns. Don't be saying what's when you're supposed to say is or we are when you're supposed to say I am. And I've seen a lot of people will be saying my names are. That is totally wrong. How many are you? Are you not just one person? So how can you say my names are? You know, a lot of people will argue about this, but it's very, very wrong. So communication must be good. You must be fluent. You must be very audible. People must be able to hear you. You must speak. You don't have to be an orator, but you must be fluent. Okay? You must communicate clearly. Okay? The person that you're talking to must hear you and understand you and must respond to you very well. Those are the elements of good communication. Okay? You must pass across a message. That you, must, you know, elements of communication, there must be a message. Okay? There must be an audience. You must be able to pass across the message very well, and then you must get an adequate response. Those are the elements of good communication. So for communication to be complete, all those things must be there. You must be able to pass across your message very well. Then you should be able to demonstrate your motivation, and you must demonstrate initiative while you are being interviewed. You must demonstrate that you are a self-starter, that you work with very little or minimum supervision, that you are self-motivated. Those are employability skills reliability demonstrate that you are reliable there are some questions that will be thrown at you and all they want to know is whether you are reliable or not you must be able to follow instructions okay you must be able to work in a team so those are employability skills ability to follow instructions ability to work in a team patience okay you must be able to demonstrate patience you must be able to demonstrate resilience okay and emotional control those are Personal qualities, personal values, general qualities that will enable you to thrive in the workplace. So when you are being interviewed, these are some of the things that people ask for. These are the, I mean, that they look out for. They are looking at your communication. They are looking at whether you are reliable, whether you are able to follow instructions, whether you can work well in a team, you know, general skills like that. Okay. Multitasking. Okay. No, I'm coming to multitasking. Okay, not really employability, but you see it under the other type of skills. Now, transferable skills. Don't forget that I said there are three major type of skills that I look for when I interview. Okay, we've spoken about employability skills. Then let's talk about transferable skills. Now, for transferable skills, these are skills that are useful across various jobs and industries. Okay, don't mix it up with employability skills employability skills are those general that can help you to do your work okay things that you should normally have but transferable skills are useful across various jobs and industries for example research and ana analytical skills useful across various jobs and industries so if you have research skills if you are very analytical you can work with excel you can work with you know so those are transferable skills okay at the Emiro team, he said, don't over impress with grammar. Simple and clarity, of course, that's communication. I tell people, if you speak the kind of grammar that Obai Agbon speaks, you are not communicating, you are just talking. Don't go to an interview and be speaking Obai Agbon grammar, except maybe you are being interviewed to be a professor of English studies or whatever, and you need to impress them. So for communication, it must be understood. It must be simple, it must be clear. Okay, so transferable skills, research and analytical skills, okay? problem solving skills critical thinking and this is where multitasking also comes okay your ability to manage time numeracy skills okay you see some job roles you need to demonstrate that you have very good numeracy skills because maybe what you need to be doing is to be calculating adding you know and if you make any mistake, it can be very, very dire, have dire consequences for the organization. So you may need to demonstrate that you have numeracy skills. 
you are able to manipulate data, you know, statistical data, you know, and all that. Then written communication. I tell people, you know, oral communication is different from written communication. If you are able to write, not many people can write very well. Not many people. So if you're able to write very well, that is a major skill that you have. If you're able to write very, very well, that's a major skill that you have. So talking about transferable skills, research and analytical skills, problem solving, critical thinking, multitasking, management, numeracy, written communication, those are some of the things that we look out for when we interview. We want to be able to see that you demonstrate some of these skills by the way you answer the questions, okay? So let's talk about technical skills. Don't forget I said three types of skills I look for, okay? The first one is your employability skills. Second one, transferable skills. And third one is the technical skills. Now, when you're talking about technical skills, you're talking about your ability and knowledge. Ability and knowledge that is needed to perform very specific tasks, okay? And, you know, these skills are very practical, very practical, and they relate usually to maybe IT, mechanical, scientific tasks, even marketing, okay? Even some aspects of banking. So technical skills, very practical, that knowledge, that skill, that ability you need to perform specific tasks, and they're very practical. For example, you have knowledge of programming languages, that's a technical skill, okay? You can do Java, you can do Python, you can do, you can code, you know, those are very um, special technical skills. Software proficiency, maybe there are certain software you can handle, you are an app developer, you can, you know, do this and do that. Software proficiency is a technical skill. Project management skills, that's also a technical skill. Data analysis, that's also a technical skill. Now, for example, in the financial service sector, if you are an experienced hire, one of the things I look out for, especially if you're coming to sales, is your ability to write credit. Your credit skills, that's a technical skill. So I may ask you questions about import finance facility. How do you structure it? I may ask you questions about what do you do if you're, um, if you're going to establish a healthy a letter of credit. So that, those are technical questions that I post to you to be able to know the level of your technical skills. So three things that we look out for, we look out for your uh, employability skills, we look out for transferable skills, and then we look, we look out for technical skills, okay? Now, still talking about 10 critical areas that I look out for, your career goals and aspirations. A lot of people who interview want to know how your goals fit into the organization's aspirations. So want to know whether in one year you will still be with us or in two years you will still, um, you would have gone or you, you see yourself developing and rising or growing together with the organization. So usually a lot of people ask, where do you see yourself in five years? You know, we ask about your career goals. We ask about your career aspirations to see whether your goals, you know, are congruent with the um, organization's aspirations. So you need to be able to sit down and define your career goals and your aspirations so that you will see whether, oh, I see a future in this organization. I will not stay in this organization for a long time. I just want to be here, you know, for one year, for two years, and then I learn whatever I need to learn and then move on. So those are some of the things we also look out for when we are talking to candidates. We want to be sure that maybe you have a future with us. Maybe um, you are fit for all. Uh, we want to look at your aspirations, whether it is in tandem with the aspirations of the organization. Okay, and then we look out for leadership abilities. Okay, we look out for people who can take initiatives. So we ask questions around you having a self drive. We look out for people who can take or assume responsibility. Those are some of the questions we are asked. You know, it helps us to know whether you can take responsibility. We look out for people who have led the group. There was a time I was interviewing a particular lady, and she was a very engaging conversationalist. You know, she was, in fact, she took charge of the interview. The way she was talking, all of us on the panel, we just wanted to listen to her. Very good conversation. And she was telling the conversation very well. And then suddenly I asked the question, because it was not on her CV. I said, when you were in school, when you were on campus, did you lead a group? Were you part of a group where... And she said, yes. You know, it turned out that she was vice president of the student union on her campus. I said, wow, no wonder. Good communication skills, good leadership, the way she was answering those questions, 
telling us that, and then she belonged to a group on campus called Enactus. So I actually encourage people, if you're a student and you're listening to me right now, it is not just about you going to school. Please, you need to belong to some of those organizations. They help you with leadership skills. Go and join JCI. Go and join Rotaract Club. Go and join Enactus. I think they have another name now. You know, go and join some of those. It helps you with your leadership skills. So we look out for people who have led the group. In fact, when the first job I got, I actually told them during the interview that I was president of the student union. So they were interested. They said, oh, you have done Aluta before. And I laughed. I said, well, leadership is not just about Aluta. And then they wanted to know what I achieved as president of the student union. So people need, they are more interested in people who have those leadership abilities. Okay, then we look out for people who have volunteered to handle a task. So it's good if you have volunteered before, please write it on your CV. We look for people who are problem solvers. Okay, we look for the value you are bringing to the table. So during the interview, you should be able to talk about the value. It's not just that you are coming to earn a salary. You should be able to say, if you hire me, this is the value I will bring to the table. These are the problems I will try to solve. These are the things I will try to do. Okay, so those are the kind of conversations we must look to have during an interview. And then we look at your personality. Okay, we look at your personality. This is the, this is the final one. We look at your personality. So sometimes employers will use personality interview tests to evaluate your personality, okay? Just to look at your personality traits. Okay, and sometimes we ask questions that will reveal your personality. We ask questions like, tell me about a time that you almost missed the deadline, okay? We want to know about your personality. We ask, do you prefer working alone or in a team? We want to know whether you're a lone ranger. We want to know whether you can work well in a team. We want to know whether you feel uncomfortable working in a team. So it reveals, there are some questions that are hard that reveal your personality. Okay? We ask, tell me if you have ever experienced a situation where someone asked you to compromise your values and what did you do? This was a question that I was asked during one interview some years ago. The person who was interviewing me wanted to know if I had experienced a situation before and that I should clearly state that situation where someone asked me to compromise my values and what did I do? So they want to know your personality. They want to know about integrity, what you hold as your core values. All right? So those are the 10 things. I've mentioned the 10 things, 10 critical areas that you need to look at. Let me just do a quick recap of those 10 critical areas. Okay? Introduction your confidence, your CV, that's number three. Know about the company and the role, that's number four. Your communication, that's number five. Your personal grooming, that's number six. Your skills, number seven. Your career goals and aspirations, number eight. Your leadership abilities, number nine. And then your personality, number ten. Okay? Now, there are five red flags, and I'm going to round up shortly. Five red flags that you must avoid in any interview. Five red flags that you must avoid in any John Bami Bear, good to see you here. Jonathan, Nwagwago, okay, nice to see you, bro. Adegbe Sonlu, Wakayo Day. Benjamin, Olamide Joshua. Adewali Adeboye, thank you for joining. STO, thank you for joining. Brother Adewali Adeboye, thank you so much. I appreciate you for joining tonight. So five red flags that you need to avoid. Now, these five red flags are things you must never do. You must never do it in the interview. Number one, don't badmouth your former employer. Okay? Don't badmouth your former employer. Ah, Bumi, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You said do a research about the company challenges. The company, the challenges the organization might be dealing with. Mention how you can have value and help the organization to alleviate their challenges. Thank you so much. Bumi is a HR specialist. We are happy to have you here. I hope I'll be able to bring you online, you know, so people can see your face and then we can try to attend to their questions. Thank you so much, Bumi. She runs a company called Victoria and Associates at Okwebi in um, Lagos. She's a HR specialist and she also engages in outsourcing, um, outs helping co companies to get um, outsourced staff, you know, helping them with their hiring processes. Thank you, Bumi. Okay, so five red flags to avoid in an interview. Number one, don't badmouth your former employer. Don't badmouth your former employer. Don't speak ill. I've sat in places where you just ask the candidate, why did you leave your former employer? Why do you want to leave? And then the person starts to talk so negatively about that employer. Ah, they don't do well in that company. That company is very useless. 
Ah, in fact, that man, he bullies me. That man is a terrible man. Now, if you badmouth your former employer, I know also you are going to badmouth me when you leave. Don't badmouth your former employer. Don't say negative things about your former company. That company paid you salary for a long time. Don't go to another company and then say something negative. You don't even know whether the person you are interviewing knows that your former boss. So don't badmouth your former employer. And please, don't badmouth your former employer even online. Don't say negative things about the place you work. They conduct background checks right now on your LinkedIn profile, on your Facebook, on your Twitter. That's why a lot of times when I see people begin to abuse some people on Twitter, I just laugh. You don't know whether you are abusing the person that's going to employ you tomorrow. You don't even know. And they will do a background check on you and then they will see it. So don't badmouth your former employer. Don't badmouth your former company. Don't say negative things about them. In fact, you should be full of praises for them to learn so, so, so while you were there. It was a fantastic company. And I learned this. I learned that. They were able to help me with this. This was the experience I was able to, you know, carry with me and all that. So never say anything negative about your former employer. It's a red flag. Anytime somebody like that says it during my interview, it's a no-no. That person cannot be hired because you will say the wrong thing about me tomorrow. Okay? Number two, please don't use curse words or inappropriate language or slangs during an interview. Okay? Don't use curse words. You know? <laughs> there was a time that a candidate had to use the word like, pardon my French, you know, was saying, I was pissed off. No, don't use such language during an interview. Or said, I was pissed off. Those are toxic words. Don't use curse words. Don't use inappropriate language. Don't use slangs. And you know, this Malian generation, please, don't go and use mafo, mafo, or, you know, during your interview. Don't go and use inappropriate language or slangs or curse words. And do not text or call on your phone during interviews. Okay, I see a lot of people, they would have forgotten to put their phones on silent. Okay, your phones must always be on silence mode. Or you switch it off totally so that you are not distracted. And then their phone rings, they are forgotten. And then they are distracted. That moment of distraction unsettles you and then it irritates the person who is interviewing you. So do not text. Some people, you'll be talking to them, they will be texting. Okay, and we know it's a smartphone generation. But please, during that process when you are being interviewed, divorce your phone. Forget you even had a phone. So don't text, don't call on your phone. It's inappropriate. Some people you'll be interviewing, they will not pick a call. Ah, ah, I'm sorry, sir. Apologies, sir. It's a no-no. Okay, number three, don't arrive late. Always arrive punctually. 15 minutes before the interview, 10 minutes before the interview. Arrive early in such a way that you can use the bathroom and freshen up. And you can settle down you can clean your sweat you can go to a mirror adjust your hair adjust your wig adjust your belt ease yourself you know take a bathroom break you can't take a you shouldn't take a bathroom break while you are being interviewed take that bathroom break before the interview so never arrive late ari slim omar kia good to have you here ibrahim adetola did you know Ogunshola, Emmanuel Lanre. Okay, Gina, Mafo. Yes, so don't go and use that slang. Go, Mafo. Omo Yami, Mafo. Eh? Engineer Prince Cornelius, I'm going to good to have you here. So don't arrive late. Number four, never push the issue of salary except you are asked specifically or during the salary negotiation. If you are, never, if you are not asked about salary, don't talk about it. You see some people just say, eh, excuse me, how much of this job, how much are you paying? No, 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 no. If we are not negotiating salary or you are not asked, you know, don't mention it. Don't mention it. It shows you are too eager or you are just there for the pay. Excuse me, sir. How much will you pay? How much will you pay for this role? You know, no, that's a no, no. Okay. And then never come unprepared. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Bumiteru says we do background checks. Your social media handles are needed to be scrutinized to get an employment letter, especially Twitter. Hey. People listen, you know, you know, some people, they wanted to drag me on Twitter this morning. But me, I don't even send them. There was a time they dragged me. They called me uh, suit. What did they call me? Sweet and tight. Suit and tight Twitter. Abby, they said we know them. Suit and tight Twitter. I was just laughing. This morning, too, one lady came and was almost dragging me. You know, I said suit and tight Twitter. They have come. They do background checks. So your social media and those of you who are always sharing uh, porn 
on your Twitter handles. You are always retweeting naked, whatever. That's all you have. It's very important to go and clean up. Now, please, I will encourage everybody to please, if you want to follow anybody on social media, follow Bumi Teru. Okay, please, just go to our Facebook page and send that friend to request. She's an HR specialist, and you can even she can even address a lot of the things I'm talking about. And this is what she wrote, and I'm reading it out. She said, we do background checks. Your social media handles are needed to be scrutinized to get an employment letter, especially Twitter. Twitter shows your personality. And that's why I tell people, social media, yes, a part of it is fun. But understand the kind of fun you do on social media. Even for interview uh, appointments with embassies now, they ask for your Twitter handle. They ask for your social media handle. Be careful what you forward. Okay? Be careful what you forward. Be careful what you retweet. Be careful what you share. You can't just share anything. I tell people anytime you share something on your social media, it means you agree with it. You can't share something and tell me you just shared it for fun. You don't actually agree with it. No. So please clean up. A lot of background checks are being done before people are hired. And I'm begging a lot of the guys in this generation, the way you drag people like Generator on, so on Twitter especially, I pray you don't drag your destiny one day oh, by mistake. So all of you will try to be savage. You don't know the kind of people you are being savage to. You think you can hide behind the handle, one handle, and then be savage. People do background checks, okay? So and finally, don't come unprepared. Don't come unprepared. So let's round this up with some sample interview questions. Okay, I'll just mention some sample interview questions. Let's run this up. It's been um, almost, uh, almost, almost two hours. Wow. So let's run this up with sample interview questions. And these are some of the questions that can come up. There are more, but I just put 10. Okay. Usually, the first thing is tell me about yourself. Tell me about yourself. Okay. What are your strengths? You know, normally the interviewer will ask you, what do you think your strengths are? And you focus about your, on your strengths you know, what you can do, your skills, the areas where you are very good. Talk about it. Boast about it. Talk about what you have done before. And then they ask, what are your weaknesses? Okay? Okay, Bumita says, please ensure you are not tagged into anything on social media. Ensure you are, your settings are on. You can decline to be tagged. Very important. Because some people will tag you to rubbish. So, make your settings on social media that nobody can tag you without your permission. Or yes, they will tag you to rubbish and it will be showing on your timeline. And in case that person who is doing a background check is not patient enough to know that you are tagged, since they can sit on your timeline, they will say you are the one. Okay, so please ensure you are not tagged into anything on social media. Ensure your settings are on because you can decline to be tagged. Please follow Bumi Teru. I want to encourage you, follow Bumi Teru on Facebook. Okay? Bumi, please put your Instagram and do put your Twitter and do also here so that people can also follow you. Okay? Put your Instagram and do, put your Twitter and do so that people can also follow you. So, sample interview questions. What are your strengths? Okay, mention your strengths. What are your weaknesses? I tell people, you can mention a weakness and at the end of the day, the way you will say it, it will turn out to be strength. Now, this is one way I answer this particular question. What are your weaknesses? Please don't go and mention weaknesses that will not allow you to get the job. Weaknesses like uh, I usually wake up late. <laughs> if you mention that kind of weakness, my, my, my weakness is my bed. I usually wake up very late. That means you'll not be punctual to work. Okay, I usually wake up very late. No, but when I want to answer such a question, what are your weaknesses? Well, I tell people I'm a little impatient, especially when it comes to deadlines. I push myself very hard, so I'm a little bit impatient, especially if I'm not getting something or if I have a deadline that is approaching, or if I have a team that is not working very well, I'm usually very impatient. So you can see that the way I've actually couched that my response, that impatience does not actually, that weakness does not actually look so bad after all. But don't mention a weakness that at the end of the day, they will not be able to give you the job. Oh, I, I actually wake up very late. I wake up very late, you know, and all that, okay? So number four, wh why do you want this job? Or why do you think we should hire you? Why do you think we should hire you? That's also a question that a lot of people will ask. Why? And when they ask you this question, why do you think we should hire you? You should be able to talk about the values you will add. 
That is the time you should talk about your skills and the value you will bring to the table. Why should we hire you? So talk about your skills. Talk about the values right there. Okay? Then they can ask, where do you see yourself in five years? That's one question that I never, ever fail to ask. Because I want to see the person I want to hire. I want to, I want to actually see whether the person has a long-term view of the career. I want to see where the person is going to. Okay, so I ask, where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you see yourself in five years? I want to see whether you can set goals for yourself, whether you are aspirational, you know. So, okay, Pastor Edeji said, what's the importance of adding scenarios when answering interview questions? Oh, I actually mentioned that earlier. I said you should tell a story. Okay, if you have relevant stories, relevant scenarios, mention them when you are answering questions. It makes it very beautiful. It makes that interview become a conversation. Okay, so you can mention scenarios. You can give examples. You know, that actually proves that you have that experience, that you are qualified to talk about that role, that you understand the demands of that role. So yes, Pastor Yedid Yakishola, yes, the importance of adding scenarios is very good. Everybody loves a good story, okay? If you're a very good storyteller, don't tell too much stories, but you're a very good storyteller. You can spice that interview up with stories, believe me. You are a good conversationalist and anybody who wants to engage you all right okay bumiteru okay the ig instagram and is at bumiteru and it's the same as facebook okay is it the same as as twitter also okay all right so what attracted you to this company that's another question that you can be asked what attracted you what's the attraction we are not the only one in this space doing this kind of business or selling this kind of service what is the attraction don't tell them the attraction is the salary you Please, don't tell them that the attraction is the salary. You can tell them that the attraction is the ability for you to also learn certain things. You can mention certain developments that has arisen in that sector and that that particular company is spearheading, if they are spearheading the development, and that you will be glad to be part of it, that you want to be part of that success progress. You can mention that trajectory, maybe uh, that trajectory, maybe you have seen their growth from the past three years. And you can see that they have a bigger aspiration in 2020. And you will love to be part of that aspiration because you know that will change the face of this industry. So you also want to be part of that change. Okay? It's like you are boosting their ego. Okay? And at the same time, you are showing them that you know a little bit about that company. You know where they want to get to and you are part of their future. All right? So be able to speak, you know, very clearly about what attracted you to the company. Now, what do you consider your biggest achievements? Okay, this is also a very important question. What do you consider your biggest achievement? Okay, Bumita, we said if you can follow this star scenario for questions, beautiful. The star scenario, if you are, I mean, for interview questions, star scenario, situation, timelines, action, and review in the form of a lesson. Okay, the star scenario for questions, the situation, okay, the timeline, the action, and the review. I'm still going to bring um, uh, Bumihon. Abumi is a specialist, so that Abumi can actually talk um, about this. Okay, so what do you consider your biggest achievement? What do you consider your biggest achievement? Be able to speak about that. What are your biggest achievements? What have you done? Oh, I won this particular contract for my company, and it is the biggest in the whole of sub sahara Africa at that time. And that contract, we're able to put 250 people on that job and all that. So you should be able to talk about your biggest achievement. Okay, talk about it. Do a little bit of gloating, a little bit of boasting, not too much, so that you're not seen as someone who has ego, but be able to talk about your biggest achievement. Describe your dream job. And when you're describing your dream job, please talk a little bit about that particular job role. Let them know it is your dream job. Okay, don't be describing your dream job and you're describing the job in another company. They will just tell you, sorry, your future is not with us, it's with that company. Okay. Then why do you want to leave your current job? Okay? Don't tell them it's because of salary. Tell them it's because of career advancement. Tell them it's because of the opportunity to be able to advance your career, opportunity to learn more, opportunity to contribute more within that space. Okay? And then one question, how will others describe you? That's also a sample interview question. How will others describe you? Would they describe you as somebody who is an extrovert, as an introvert? How would they describe you? Okay? So I think I'm going to stop here tonight. And um, what we have been able to do, wow, we spent two hours. And wow, thank you so much for everybody who is still here. 
Okay, what we have been able to do today is to talk about the type of interviews, what you need to do pre-interview, okay? We spoke about the 10 critical areas that you need to pay attention to for interviews, 10 areas that I, I personally always look for. A great introduction, your confidence, your CV, okay? And we spoke about the content of a CV. We talk, spoke about CV formats. And then you must know about that company and the role you are being interviewed for. Communication, communication, communication. Very important. Spoke about personal grooming. Personal grooming is key. We spoke about skills. And I mentioned the three major skills I'm looking for. Spoke about employability skills, transferable skills, technical skills. We spoke about career goals and aspirations. We looked at leadership abilities, and then we looked at your personality. Then I spoke about the five red flags to avoid in an interview, and then we looked at sample interview questions. Thank you very much. So we can take questions right now. We can take questions right now. Thank you so much for everyone who has joined. I would like to take questions now. Questions, if you have questions, you can type them out, and then I will answer them. Questions now. Thank you, Esther Desmenu, for joining us. Adeni Ade Emi, thank you. Ade BC Faith, Adeni, thank you. So many people online tonight, thank you. Thank you for listening to this presentation. So we can take your questions now. We can take your questions now. Me, Daziz, good to have you here, bro. Let's take your questions. So we can take questions so that I can run this up by nine. Let's take questions now. Let's take questions if you have them. Reading out a few things that Bumite wrote. Say, do a research about the company. Do a research about the challenges the organization might be dealing with. Mention how you can add value and help the organization to alleviate their challenges. Okay, so do a research about the company, about the challenges the company is facing. Mention how you can add value. Mention how you can help the organization to alleviate the challenges. That comes from a research. Okay. Okay. Questions. If you have questions, at the end, wrote me said, "Don't over impress with grammar. Be simple. Okay. Sim simplicity and clarity, very important. Communication is a skill, of course it is, and you need to work on it so that you can get better and better. A lot of times, um, in the early days when I go for interviews, what I usually do is I face a mirror. You know, my mom used to have one standing mirror, one full size mirror like this. I will stand in front of the mirror." And I will rehearse for a long time. You know, I will, I will ask myself questions and then I will answer. Tell me about yourself. And then I will say, my name is Bayou Adeyinka. I graduated from... Now, when you are introducing yourself, there are certain things that are not relevant. When you are introducing yourself, I don't need to know where you came from. I am from Odi Omu in Oshun State. Are you daddy local government? Come on. I don't need to know all that. When I say, tell me about yourself, I was born in Ibadan. I was born in Akinyele local government. I was born at CAC Mission House at Oninyan Ibadan. Come on, nobody wants to know about that. Okay? So it's important that you take some time to practice. And practice makes perfect. The more you practice, the better you get. It's not just about being an orator and being very fluent. Yes, you must be fluent, but you must be able to communicate clearly. The person you are talking to must be able to hear you very well. Okay? So, do we have questions now? I'm still waiting for questions. Okay. Kola De Fumi, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Fumi Dosumu at Afolabi, thank you, ma'am. And happy birthday. Many happy returns of the day. God bless you. The longer you live, the brighter you will shine. Fumi Dosumu Afolabi. Okay. Um, okay. Ni Balogun, thank you. Duni, Dunski, thank you for joining. Ah, Reverend Okwemi, you are here. Thank you for joining. 
Thank you so much. Adeto Yolua Shil, thank you. You are someone that is very consistent. I hope you can hear now. Very consistent. Yesterday, when I was supposed to do this, when I didn't, he sent me a message. But what a guy, when are you when are you doing this now? Thank you. Mustafa Manela de Wale, you said plain white shirt and pattern tie. Well, plain white shirt is very important if you have um, I mean it must be plain. I love it plain, not patterned. But the shirts, you can play, I mean, the tie, you can play around with the tie. But ensure that your tie also matches your suit. All right? Okay? So, um, yes, if you have questions, we're waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. If you have questions, I'm waiting. Mayawa, Deborah, Emodi. Oluke Shiro, Richie Oyeleke. Thank you, bro. All the way from the US. Thank you. Yin Fatex Oluta here. Thank you, bro. Good to have you here. Okay, so I'm waiting. If you have questions, I'm here to answer. And then Bumi also will be helping me. Bumi Teru will also be helping me. Please follow Bumi Teru. Our IG handle is at Bumi Teru. Bumi Teru. Bumi is a fantastic HR specialist. Fant and she has experience across you know, um, the service industry, she has experience in telecoms, you know, if I read out her CV to you, I mean, you, you, I mean, she, she's so experienced that then she helps to fit people into different roles, you know, holds one employability workshop, May 1 every year. We're not sure if this one will be able to hold because of this COVID issue, you know, but if it holds, it's, it's, it's um, a workshop that I recommend for everybody. No matter the level you are in your career, fantastic workshop, you know. So please follow Bumiteru on Instagram at Bumiteru. Follow her also on Facebook, you know. Jimmy, Jimmy Akikwiton, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, Anolu Akbo also asked a question. What if you are asked how much do you want to be paid? What should be your response? Very good question. If you are asked, how much do you want to be paid? How should you respond to that? Now, I tell people, don't bring up the salary until they bring up this issue of salary. And when they ask you, how much do you want to be paid? Number one, you should have researched the role in that company. Okay? Number two, if it is your sector, for example, now I am a banker, okay? And I know the level I am. If I want to move to another place and I know the role I am asking for, I have an idea of the applicable salary, okay, in the industry for that particular level. Even if I don't have an idea about the applicable salary for that level, because I am moving and I am transiting in the same sector, within the same sector, to another bigger role, of course, I will not want to be paid any less than I am earning right now. So it is appropriate for you to put a certain percentage above what you are earning right now. Okay, so for example, if I'm earning 100,000 Naira per month, if that is my salary, 100,000 Naira per month, and I want to move into another role, okay, it is appropriate for me, if they say, how much do you want to earn? I can tell them I want to earn 150 or I want to earn 200,000, and then we'll negotiate. Okay, so if it is an, if you're an experienced hire, you are not a fresh graduate, you are an experienced hire. You should be bold enough to negotiate your salary. Don't shy away from asking what you want to hand, especially if you have demonstrated value during the interview. If you have demonstrated value during the interview. I remember there was a particular interview I did, and it took us three days to negotiate salaries. They called me on a Wednesday that, how much do I want to hand? I told them. And then the HR lady, we started talking, and I said, no, I cannot hand below this. She called me again on Thursday. We continued the conversation, negotiating for salary. And then we were only able, okay, two days. We negotiated Wednesday. We negotiated Thursday. And then on Friday, she called me to come and pick up my offer letter. So you can negotiate your salaries, especially if you're an experienced hire. Don't be afraid to mention an amount. Don't be afraid, especially when you know how much you are earning right now. You cannot afford to earn lower. So if you're transiting, if you're moving, you should earn higher. Now, if you are a fresh graduate, it's a different ballgame because you, you may not have an idea of how much they earn. So it is safe for you to say, well, I believe you have a salary scale. Okay. And for me, it's not just about the salary. I'm here to come and learn. 
it's about the experience. But you have a salary scale. Whatever your salary scale that is applicable for my level is fine for me. But I'll just appreciate an opportunity for me to come and add value to the organization. So if you are fresh, it's different. If you are an experience higher, of course, you can negotiate your salary. You can tell them what you want, especially if you have demonstrated that, look, you guys need me. I am going to add value to the organization. You need me. Be bold enough to negotiate your salary. Okay? All right. Um, so do we have other questions now, Adiola? I'm not seeing questions, though. Are people that satisfied that people are not asking questions? Are people that satisfied? If you have questions, please ask. Please ask. If you have questions, please ask. Reverend Raf, are you still here? Reverend Raphael Idealo, are you still here? Okay, so if you have questions, please, I'll just wait a few more minutes. Questions, so that we can just um, call it a day. Okay, maybe we'll go over this sample interview questions. Tell me about yourself. Like I said, that's introduction. It must be catchy. It must be very brief. You must be able to mention something significant that is not right there in your CV. Okay, something that will arouse their attention and possibly lead to a proper engagement during the interview okay please don't tell them irrelevant things nobody wants to hear where you were born i was born in uh, number one idoc road abebi ibadan nobody wants to hear that okay all right so what are your strengths you should be able to mention your key strengths okay and under this your strength you should be able to talk about your key abilities your capacity what you can do Okay, your, your weaknesses, I've mentioned the fact that don't mention a weakness that will end up to haunt you. I, I My weakness is sleep. I just sleep and I wake up very late. Okay, that is a weakness that will end up to haunt you. Nobody will hire you for that. Okay, but couch your weakness in such a way that it even looks like a strength. I am impatient, especially when I have deadlines to meet. I'm impatient when my team is not meeting up with their deliverables and their numbers so it gets me on edge and i can be very edgy and i can be very impatient okay that also type but when you mention your weakness don't also forget to mention how you are working on the weakness so don't just leave your weakness hanging i am impatient especially when i have deadlines to me however this is what i am doing to work on my weakness so when you mention your weakness also mention how you are working at it so these are, I'm working at my weakness. Um, I try to delegate more. I try to do this more so that it can help me. I'm overcoming those weaknesses little by little and all that. So when you mention your weaknesses, also mention what you are doing about them. Okay. Why do you want this job? Or why do you think we should hire you? In that place, you should talk about the value you are bringing on board. Or oh, if you hire me for this job, I can help you to increase your profitability by 20% in six months. I can help you to reduce your cost by 10% in five months. Of course, that means that you must have done, done your research concerning that company. Okay, so but when you are asked that question, why do you want the job or why do you think we should hire you? That is the right place to talk about the value you bring on board. That is the right place to talk about the value you will add, about the special skills that you will leverage. Okay, about what value addition you are bringing to the company. Okay, where do you see yourself in five years? I, like I said, that's a question I always ask anytime I interview. So you should be able to talk about where you see them, where you see yourself in five years, your career goals, your aspirations. You know, usually I want to see whether this person is a hungry candidate, whether he's hungry, whether he's aggressive. You know, especially if you are applying for a sales role, what people call a marketing role. We want to see whether you are aggressive, you are focused, you are motivated, you have that gun go factor, you know. So we we'll ask, where do you see yourself in five years? I don't want somebody who is laid back, especially for a sales role. You know, I don't want, there was someone, there was a lady I interviewed and asked, where do you see yourself in five years? And she said, in my husband's house. 
you know well that is fine that's fair that's personal okay but the kind of answers we're looking for are the things that tie to the organization where do you see yourself in five years all right what attracted you to this company you should be able to talk about the attraction okay and that is one way where you will help the you will massage the ego of the company you know you massage their ego what attracted you to this company what do you consider your biggest achievement talk about your achievements Talk about it. Be very free with your achievement. Talk about your achievements. Okay? Do a little bit of boasting there. It is allowed. Describe your dream job. Describe your dream job. Okay? Why do you want to leave your current job? Simple answer. It's career advancement. I believe that I'll be able to advance my career. I'll be able to come and learn this here. And it will also help me for my career. Okay? How will others describe you? All right? So... Questions, questions, any more questions, or we will call it a day. Or we'll call it a day. Maybe three more minutes. Three more minutes. If we have questions, we'll just have three more minutes to spend here. Three more minutes. I'm going to leave the slide. Everything will be on my timeline, on my Facebook timeline. So you can always come back and um, go through the slides. This is my own contribution, you know, for all of us that are at home for lockdown, so that we engage ourselves and we learn one or two things from each other, from one another. Okay, so um, this is just a way of me mentoring some people. It was part of my goals this year that I want to mentor a few folks online, since I cannot have access to everybody that is asking for me to mentor them. So. I never even knew there was going to be a lockdown, but it was part of my written goals that I'll be doing some live, some webinars so that I can mentor people. And thank God this opportunity came. So I'm using this opportunity to try to uh, mentor a few folks and um, share some experience, share some knowledge, you know, virtually. And I hope this has been a fitting time. Oyinkan, Oyinkan, good to see you. How is your baby and how is your husband? Thank you for joining. I just said, Olaso come, Yoluashino Joshua. Thank you. Ade Ola. Thank you. Thank you. So, still waiting for questions. If you have questions tonight, we have just two more minutes. Just two more minutes. If you have questions on the training tonight or interview questions. Okay, so this is going to be on my timeline. You can go through it. Um, today is Thursday. Hopefully, by Saturday, maybe I will run another training. I don't know if the lockdown will be um, extended or not, but, you know, that will determine um, if we're going to have some other trainings next week. But Saturday, I'm also going to come back online to run another training. I'll let you know the topic by tomorrow. All right. But I hope this has been beneficial to everybody. I'm trying to do it on that. I'm trying to set up a leadership academy, by a day, a leadership academy, and um, trying to use it to drive this. Okay, as my own contribution to um, to the society. Okay, so sorry, the guy who came to who asked for me to do giveaway here again and drop the account number. Sorry, I don't do that. Oh, I don't do that. And I think that entitlement mentality is killing our youth. The way they are just dropping account number everywhere. Okay. All right, so one more minute to go. If there are no questions, one more minute. One minute. Kuye, thank you for joining tonight. So good to see you. Mulialaba, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Okay, so if there are no more questions, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you. I appreciate you. And then I hope to see you on Saturday. Thank you. Good night. And God bless you. Bye.